السلام علیکم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ اشد اللہ اللہ وحت لا شریک اللہ اشد ان محمد رسول اللہ Brothers and sisters, one day, a good friend of mine, well known to you, the great Muhammad Ali, was on a plane. And the flight attendant said, Mr. Muhammad Ali, please put on your seat belt. He said, Superman don't need no seat belt. She looked at him and said, Superman don't need no plane. So he put on the seat belt. I must admit to you tonight that I'm conflicted. On the one hand, I've been away so long. I am tempted to keep you here tonight past midnight. For real. But my sensibilities tell me that you have been well taught. It's been a long night. So therefore, I'll say a, a few words. Immediately, my question is this. These are Emma. These leaders that you heard tonight. There is a danger. The danger is this. Allah asks the question, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ So where are you going? The danger is, after receiving all of this knowledge, What are you going to do when you leave here tonight? Where are you going? Tomorrow. What are you going to do? Allahumma inni a'udhika min ilmin la yanfa'u. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from knowledge that doesn't benefit. How dare you sit here hour after hour after hour with all of that wisdom, all of that knowledge? And then what? One of my teachers in 1978 in Mecca, Sheikh Hussein Hamid Hassan, taught us the meaning of scholarship. Every question we asked them, he would give us this answer. We have three opinions. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbu has this opinion based on this evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. Imam Malik has a different answer with this evidence. Imam Abu Hanifa has another answer. And he taught us the meaning of scholarship. And my teacher started every class the same way. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta lalimul hakim. Glory be to you, O oh Allah. We have no knowledge except for what you have given to us. You, Allah, are the knowing and the wise. There's a danger tonight. All of 
this knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge, and we will get up tonight. We will walk out of here. We'll go back home. And the question is, will we go back the same way as before we came in? Might I show you a spectacle that took place sometime in the history of man? Our illustrious Sheikh spoke about the angels. I want you to look at this spectacle that took place at some time in human history. Allah says it like this. فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ And therefore, all of the angels, every one of them, them prostrated. How many angels are there? Incalculable. You can't count them. But at one time in the entire universe, every angel without one exception at the same time, time bow down to the one that Allah created. Adam. All over the universe. Not one of them disobeyed Allah. And they're all prostrated. But there was a jinn named Iblis. One jinn refused to bow down to Adam. Ma man akal tashjuda if amartuka kala. I am better. I am better than him. You created me. You what? You created me. Who's he speaking to? Allah. He knows who created him. You created me. You created me of fire and him you created of mud, clay. He knows who his creator is. And then he said, Rabbi, my Lord, fa'andhirni illa yawman yubathun. My Lord, you created me my Lord, give me time for what? Until the day that they are resurrected. Resurrected? You created me? My Lord, give me time? Is he believe? Does he believe? Does he believe? Let me give you one more. Pick up Muslim Hadith, Kitabul Iman. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that every time the children of Adam is given a commandment to prostrate. And when they prostrate, Shaitan goes in seclusion and he cries. Woe is with me. Children of Adam was ordered to prostrate and they prostrated Falahul Jannah. For them is Jannah. Wali, Wali, and Nar. And for me, the hellfire. Huh? This is Iblis speaking. For them is Al Jannah. For me, is Al -Hal Al -Hal the hellfire. Does Iblis believe? Huh? Huh? Does he believe? You would think so. Abba was takbar. Wa kena minal kafirin. 
He refused. He was arrogant. And he was among the disbelievers. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Here. What's going on back there? I'm checking you out. And that comes to my point. I ain't speaking all night, though I'm tempted to do it. But I'm going to leave you with a thought about you and you and you and you and you and you and you of you. You too. about who we are. And you can't talk about who we are until you first talk about who Allah is. We heard that tonight. One verse from the Quran to consider. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَىٰ أَلَّا اللَّهُ رِسْكُهَا There is not one animal on this earth except Allah has taken upon himself to give it its substance. Might I take one animal? Sheikh Minson mentioned the whale. What about the blue whale? whale? 100 feet long. Weighing 200 tons with a tongue the size of an elephant and the heart the size of an automobile. Living 80 years in this huge blue whale eats every day. And what does it eat? A little shrimp-like animal called krill. And how much does it eat? 40 million krill a day. Four tons and it eats. Can you imagine you as a human being have to eat the same food every day? Yes, the sheikh said it. Allah has honored us. The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, in the ma'ana bashar, didn't he? I'm only human. I'm only human. Why did he say that? Because Allah ordered him to say, cool, in the ma'ana bashar, mithlukum. Say, I am only a human being just like you. So on the one hand, we could say we're only human, but on another hand, an angel can say, in the ma'ana malakum, I am only an angel because there are things that we have that's a little bit different. Can you give me five more minutes? Take a few hours. Now, when I go a few hours, you know who to blame. I'm trying to give you an out. Take it. Think about this for a moment. Alam taraw anna Allah sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Don't you see? Allah has subjected for you everything in the heavens and earth. The Sheikh said it. So that means you got to start looking around and say, what did Allah, what did he do for me as a human being? And I'll give you one example. Do you know that dogs have a sense of smell millions of times more sensitive than human beings? They are now training dogs to smell the breath of men to determine if they have cancer. Sheikh, I went to your country, Australia. 
And I landed in the airport. By the way, I want to let you know this. I love Australia. That's one of the countries I can live there. And when you land in Australia in the airport, there's a sign saying, warning, you may not want to go back home. For real. So I want to let you know I love you, I love you and I love your country. So me and my wife, we get to the airport, right? And we go down to the luggage. Go get our luggage. And there was a security man with a dog. And you know, they were smelling the luggage. And they started smelling my wife's luggage. And the dog wouldn't go away. Now I know they're looking for one of three things. Either for drugs, so I started looking at my wife. <laughs> or explosives, I started walking away from my wife. <laughs> or they're looking for food. And yes, she had in her luggage food. We are so blessed as human beings, so honored by Allah. But this is the question. You are the best. Sheikh Shadi mentioned, Kuntum khara ummatan ukhrija linas. You're the best. But I want to know what you're going to do when you leave here. Look at the Muslims. You got 2 billion Christians on this earth. 1.6 billion Muslims. 950 million Hindu. 450 million Buddhists. And uh, 15,000 Jews. Our numbers are growing in unbelievable ways. There was a report two years ago entitled, Faith is Shifting, Drifting, or vanishing outright. And that report said that in the United States, the number of people who claim to be Christians in the last generation has decreased by 11%. The Jews, the report went on to say, show a steady decrease, while the number of Muslims has doubled in the last generation. Moscow, right now, Moscow, are, they're building a masjid in Moscow right now that will accommodate 60,000 worshipers. Everywhere you go on this planet is the sign of the growth of the Muslims. France, 10% of the population, Muslim. Moscow, between 10 and 15% of the people Muslim. But I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about for real, what are we? A young sister comes to my office I hadn't seen her in years. I know her from a, a young child. She's 20 something years old now with a baby. Say, Imam, I, I just had to come see you. And then before she left, I asked, what about the deen? What about your faith? What about Islam? She said, hey, ma'am, I'm not going to lie to you. She said, I'll be honest. I'm not making prayer. I don't fast in the month of Ramadan, but I believe. And I hear this over and over and over again that I am a non-practicing Muslim. And I want to know what is a non-practicing Muslim. A non-practicing Muslim is an oxymoron. Because by nature, a Muslim is a practitioner of the faith. And we make faith like it's something cheap. Well, I ain't, I ain't fasting. I'm not praying, but I'm a believer. No, no. Listen to the way Allah said in the Quran. Allah 
The desert Arabs say, we believe. Say, no, 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 uh-uh, no, 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 no. Say that you do not believe. Allah revealed it to the prophet. Tell him, you don't believe, but you have accepted, but faith has not yet entered your heart. So that is to teach us there are some people even making prayer that are not really believers. But I've never read anywhere in Sharia, the sheikhs will correct me, where you don't make no prayer, you don't do no ibadah, and you're a believer. Listen to the Quran. On Yom al Qiyamah, the people of Jannah were asked the people in hell, Ma salaka kun fi, fi, fi sakar? What has gotten you there? And the first thing they will say, Lam naku, uh, lam naku min al musalina. Right? We were not of those who kept up prayer. So in my conclusion, so Imam, what? What are you saying? I'm saying this. When you leave here, you got to do something. I laid before you shaitan and all the things that he said, and yet he's kafir. That's to teach us that iman and faith in Allah is more than mere acknowledgement. Shaitan acknowledge, but he's not a believer. I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, thanks be to Allah, tonight you came. And with Sheikh Shadi, I, I applaud you for coming. But now we want to do one more thing. We have a big job to do here in United Kingdom. My argument isn't all of those Kafirs because you think that a Kafir is one who doesn't know about Islam. I would argue that a Kafir does know about Islam and they reject the faith. Let me give you one example and then I close. Our illustrious Prophet Muhammad wasalam, talked about a Prophet that was beaten by their people so much that he began to bleed and he wiped the blood from his face and the Prophet said, Allahumma ikfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, forgive my people because they don't know. Our job, I want to thank two people. First, Al Hikmah. Number one, for having this forum, having these wonderful scholars and teachers before us, and to have invited me and I am very thankful to you for that. And number two, I thank you. Let me tell you why. Allah the Almighty says in Quran, "Qala rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum," and your Lord said, "Call upon me, and I will answer you." A few years ago, you learned that I had cancer, prostate cancer, and I heard that so many of you made a du'a. So many of you. I want to thank you that Allah answered your prayers and gave extended life to your brother Imam Saraj so that I can come here and harass you some more. So I want to thank every one of you for every dua that you made, those who even donated some money, and all of that. I am so humbled by it and so thankful to, uh, to Allah for you. I make dua for every one of you who came tonight that you get something that's going to propel you to make you better. And my last word of ad admonition is the work of Al-Hikmah and brothers and sisters like that who call and invite the people to the deen. That's our job. That's our job. May Allah bless you to do it. Thank you for such patience with us tonight.
السلام علیکم